Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus the Christ. Amen. The reading for the second reading for the sixth Sunday of Easter is from 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 13 through 22. And who is it that will harm you if you be followers of that which is good? But, and if ye suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear, having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. For it is better, if the will of God be so, that ye suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. For Christ also has once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which sometimes were disobedient, when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was a preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls, were saved by water. The like figure, whereunto even baptism doth also now save us by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who is gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers made subject unto him. Here ends the reading. Are you ready? Are you ready to give an answer to everyone who would ask you why you have so much hope? I know that there are days when we might just prefer to be a bit glib, and that could be because at the moment you just may not feel that hopeful. People can be pretty selfish and cruel, and it can be pretty tough. Nigh on impossible to be happy, happy, happy all of the time. After all, we are sinners as well. But there is a difference between being happy and being hopeful. Hopeful happens in good times, as does happy. But it also comes in those bad times when we're feeling let down. We can be hopeful even when we're persecuted. Noah lived in a pretty rough, rough time. Sin flourished in great abundance. God was about to destroy the world with a great flood but had told Noah that he would de not destroy everything. He would save Noah and his family. He would save the animals. But Noah was going to have to build a pretty big boat in order to live. We don't know exactly how long it took him to build that ark, but I'm guessing it didn't take a week or two or even a year or two. But Noah trusted the Lord, and that gave him hope, hope which kept him pressing onward toward the goal and finally, through those floodwaters. Likewise, it may take a lot more than a few years for our hope to be fulfilled, but we also have faith. Therefore, we can sincerely say we have hope in the promise of God through Christ Jesus, who died for us, and yet lives and reigns over all things at the right hand of God our Father. Because he loves us enough to die and yet continues to live for us, we Two shall live, having had our sins drowned in the wa waters of baptism through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.